Welcome back. In this video, we're going to see how we can use the infrared sensor. The infrared sensor is a really simple sensor to use and it can achieve really cool stuff. So we can control our circuit with the remote control. So I'm going to start a new circuit here. I'll add the breadboard and an Arduino. And I'm going to add we can change the components to all, search for uh, remote. We'll find the IR sensor. This is the infrared sensor, and this is the remote. So we're going to need one sensor. We'll connect it somewhere here. So we can already see the pins. This is for power, this is for ground, and this is for output. And we're going to use a remote, obviously. So first, we're going to connect the wires of the sensor. And we will connect the power to the 5 volts. And we will connect, this is the ground, to ground. And we will connect the output to, let's say, 9. In the previous code, we've used uh, two LEDs at 10 and 11. So we're going to add these LEDs as well just to To be able to control something with the remote uh, just for testing We're going to actually add just one LED for now So we'll put it here we'll add a Resistor 220 ohms from the negative to the ground Okay, and we're going to connect this to pin 10. And we're going to connect the ground to here. Actually, we can remove this wire here and also connect the ground to just the ground on our breadboard because now all of this is connected to the ground. Okay, it doesn't look so neat, but it does the job. So now basically we have a remote and we have an infrared sensor. Now this sensor is going to read the frequency we send from this remote. However, we don't know what are the frequencies for every button. So our goal here is that when we press the, uh, the one button, it will turn on the LED. When we press the second button, for example, it will turn it off. So we want to first find out what are the frequencies of the first button and the second button. And we're going to use our sensor to read the values and just output them and read what is that number. And we're going to use it later on. So we will start with the code. And the first thing I will do is including the library for, um, for the infrared sensor. So if you're using a Tinkercad, you can just do include for the IR remote. Or if you're on, on, on the Arduino IDE, you'll have to install the library first. So now that we have this IR remote, in the setup, we're going to set up a few things first. Actually, we're going to define the pins we're using. So LED pin, it's at 10. And the IR pin is at 9. So the next thing we will do is we will create an object of IR receive, which is part of the library we are using for the infrared remote. And we will pass to it the pin of the infrared. Actually, sorry, I forgot to give it a name. So we need to give it a name, which will be this. And we will pass to it the pin of our uh, infrared sensor. Now, inside, another thing we need to do is we need to use uh, another struct from the uh, library, which is called decode results. 
this basically will decode the result for us that we are reading from the sensor so we don't have to worry about that part we will call it results now in the setup we will first have to specify that our pin for the LED pin is an output pin we will need to start the serial because we want to read some outputs and display them for us to read so we will define the serial begin at 9600 and we will ena enable our receiver so this that we created here we will basically enable it so irecv the infrared receiver dot enable irn this is a function from the library as well which will enable the reading from the receiver okay so now we are ready to start reading stuff or in fact actually listening to whatever the remote is sending us so I'm going to remove these and our goal right now is to just read the values from the sensor by clicking on the first button and then clicking on the second button to know the frequencies of those values so we will use the function decode from the library so again from this receiver that we created here there's a function called decode and we will pass to it results using the and this and character and then results and what this and does is basically called passing by reference which means we are basically passing the same results we're having here so we're asking the decode function to store the value inside the one we have here if we don't use this and it will not pass the the one we have here it will just create a copy of it so this and is really important to make sure we can that this function is giving us the result inside this variable that we declared here so that we can later on check the value of it okay so if we are decoding so if, if this decode returns something because if, if there's nothing to decode it will return false and then this will not uh, do anything but if it decoded something so that happens when we actually press the button and there is an infrared sensor uh, infrared signal being directed to the sensor now what we want to do is simply output the value so we will do serial dot print line so this is the serial we we started here which now we will see we will see it here when we open the serial monitor this is where it will be we will print the line which means we're printing at every line so at the end of whatever we're printing it will move to a new line and we will pass to it the value of the results so results dot value and we will specify that we want it in hexadecimals this is hexadecimals and at the end of our loop we want to tell the receiver that now you're going to receive the next value so we're going to resume the receiver it's a function in the library which says resume and we're calling it from the infrared receiver we created here so basically for the sensor to get us the second or basically to keep listening for signals as long as this function is calling itself by the loop okay so let's run this and see what happens I'm going to open the serial monitor we're going to press on something and nothing is really happening okay the, the reason for nothing is happening is because we have the resume outside the if statement so this was a mistake we're just going to move it inside the if statement so after we decode something we're going to resume the receiver so let's test it again we're going to start the simulation we're going to check the serial monitor okay I pressed the one and we can see the hexadecimal value of that signal and I press two we can also see the hexadecimal value of that signal 
So we're going to save these two because we're going to use them now in our program. We're going basically to say if this signal is this, we're going to do that. It's really a simple program, but it is effective. So I just copied them and going to, they weren't copied. Okay, copy. Okay, so we're going to define uh, button one with this signal, with this hexadecimal value and define button two with this value. Now we also need to write a zero X next to it, which will tell our, uh, in C this represents that this is a hexadecimal number. So we will do the same thing for here, zero X and then our hexadecimal digits. Okay, so now basically inside the, our if statement inside the loop, every time we receive uh, a, a result, we, dec we decode it, we're going to do if results.value is equal to say button one, which we defined here, we're going to turn on the LED. Digital right and the LED pin and we will specify it to be high. This is the first button. So whenever it's pressed, we will turn on the light. And if it is, if the value is equal to button two, then we will write low to the pin to cut off the power of the LED. Okay, let's test this and see if it works. So I press the one and the LED turns on. I press the two, it turns off. If I press anything else, nothing will happen to the LED, although we are reading the values here. So if you want to use more buttons, you can read the values. Sometimes you will get uh, you will get some uh, noise after the the value of your pin, so you can ignore it, or you can add some uh, condition here which says if it is less than say uh, two hundred milliseconds since the last time you outputted something, don't output anything. It is it is normal to have these values if this, if you see them whenever you press quickly. Now, obviously, to reflect back on the state meshes we've been looking at. You can design a very beautiful state machine using inputs from the remote. So when uh, this button is pressed, for example, you want your robot to move forward. When this one is pressed, you want it to move backward. When the five is pressed, you want it to stop, something like that. And you would be doing transitions where the transition from one state to another is conditioned on the input. So your state will be, for example, moving forward or moving backward or whatever and your transition will be based on what are we pressing. That's the input value. I hope this explanation will help you figure out how to use the infrared sensor the right way for your projects and good luck using this sensor. It's a really cool thing to use.